Welcome to uh, Circles Part 2, Lesson 1. So this is the first lesson of the Circles Unit. This is the second unit on Circles. So, jumping right in. Note-taking guide. Let's go through our notes for the day, or for the lesson. Okay, the first one we're going to go through um, are the segments. Okay, we have circles, and the last unit we concentrated on central angles, inscribed angles, angles that were in the circle, and then angles on the outside. Well, this one, we're actually going to look at segments and links, the links associated with the tangents, with the chords, with secants, and with secants and tangents, okay? So, we're going to start with just two tangents. Okay, so we have a circle and then an exterior point and we have two tangents that are drawn to the circle. So as we learned, if you remember this, and I'm going to flip this upside down so you can see it, what rule does this follow? This follows the party hat rule. So from the last unit we looked at, we learned the party hat rule that said that if you have an exterior point and then two tangents drawn, those two segments are congruent. So, flipping back around, <laughs> the rule says the lengths of the tangent segments are the same. So, if we know we have a circle, and I'm going to draw one with triangles because we looked at one of those. Okay, if we have a triangle drawn, and we know this segment right here is 3, this segment over here is 5, and this segment over here is 3, we can actually find the perimeter. Because we would say, okay, if this one is 3, then the one, the other half of the party hat, the one on this side, would also be 3. If this one is 5, then the one on this side must be 5. If this one is 3, then the one on the other side of the party hat would be 3, and then we could add all the sides up and find the perimeter. So there's the party hat rule, which is involving two tangents. Now let's look at one with chords. The formula says the product of the lengths of one of the pieces of one chord is equal to the product of the lengths of the pieces of a second chord. Okay, so what does that mean? If you have one chord, and we've got this labeled A and B, and those are parts of the chord, this other one is labeled, the other chord is labeled C and D, we can multiply A times B and set it equal to C times D. So that's our formula. A times B equals C times D. Let me go back up here to this one, just A equals B. So these two segments are equal. Okay, so this formula is taking what the product of one chord and setting it equal to the product of the other chord. Okay, so let's do an example. Whoa. Okay, let's say that we have two chords here and we have six and two and this one is three and we don't know the other part of this one. Okay. Since this is 6 and 2 and they're on the same chord, we're going to multiply 6 times 2. And we're going to set it equal to the product of the other chord, which is 3 times x. So we're going to get 12 equals 3x. I'll just bring it over here. And so x is 4. And that is actually how you solve that one. It's very simple. So just one, the product of one chord is equal to the product of a second chord. Okay, let's look at the one that involves two secants, two secant segments. And it says the product, which means to multiply, of the lengths of a secant segment is equal to the external segment is equal to the product of the length of the second secant segment and its external segment. Hmm. Now that it sounds trickier than it really is. Okay, what we're saying is this exterior part or A and C, they're the outside parts. So when it says exterior, that's what we're talking about, this outside part is equal. Um, we're going to take that and multiply it because it says the product 
of the entire secant segment. So we're going to add the two parts together. Okay, so for example, the little formula would look like this. A times A plus B, which is the entire length of this secant segment, is equal to the outside or the exterior part times C plus D, or this entire secant segment. So the outside times the whole is equal to the outside part times the whole thing. Okay, and so let's try one. Okay, let's say that we have two and four and three and x. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take the outside two times the whole thing. So we're going to have to add 2 plus 4. So we're going to get 6. Okay? And we're going to set that equal to the product of the outside, which is 3, times x plus 3, or this entire segment, x plus 3. Okay? So that's how you'd set this one up. So we're going to get 12 is equal to 3x plus, and we're going to distribute this side, 9. So subtract 9 from both sides, so 3 equals 3x, so x is 1. So that means this segment right here is 1, okay? Not drawn to scale, but that's okay. Okay, so that's how these secant secants work. So this is secant secant, outside times the whole, outside times the whole, okay? Now let's look at the next one. This, this fourth case, it has one secant and one tangent, okay? So that's how you decide how to, when to use each set. And it says the product of the lengths of a secant segment and its external parts. So the secant segments are treated just like they are up here, the outside times the whole, is equal to the square of the length of the tangent. So we're just going to take the tangent segment and square it. Okay, so what's it going to look like as a formula? We're going to have the secant part, which is A, the outside part. Okay, so we're going to have that outside part A times the whole thing, which is adding them together. So A plus B. And that's going to equal to this tangent, the tangent segment squared. So I'm just going to set this equal to c squared. Okay, so let's try that with some numbers in there. Okay, so we've got our circle. We've got a tangent and a secant. I just drew mine the opposite way. It's fine. Okay, let's say that this is 3 and this part right here is 9. Okay, the inside part is 9 and we don't know the tangent. So we're going to call it x. Well, our outside part is A, so we're going to plug a 3 in here. And then we're going to add together for the whole secant segment. So 3 plus 9, so we're going to make add that together and get 12. Okay, and that's equal to our tangent squared, or x squared. Okay, now let's solve this one. We're going to get 36 equals x squared. So x is equal to positive or negative 6, but we know you can't have a negative length. So we're going to throw the negative answer out, and we just get x is 6. And that's how you'd solve that one. Okay, so here's your formula. Outside times the whole, the sum of the whole, is equal to the tangent squared. Okay, so keep these formulas handy. What these formulas tell us is the four different cases. You've got tangent, tangent. You've got chords on the inside, you have secant, secant, then you have on the outside a tangent and a secant. So usually they'll fall in those categories. So let's zoom in and go through some practice ones here of all the different types. Okay, so let's look at this first one. Okay, this first one is our chord, chord problem, right? We've got two chords. So we're going to take 5 times h because they're on the same chord and we're going to set it equal to 
10 times x. Okay, now remember on these chords, you're not adding anything together. You're just taking each separate part and multiplying them. So you're going to get 40 equals 10x, so x is 4. Okay, so here's another one, number 2, that's like that one. So let's jump over. You try this one, and let's try number 3. Okay, number 3 is this one. Okay, make sure it's on the screen for you. x times 12 equals 4 times 9. So you get 12x equals 36, so x must be 3. Okay, so that's how you would get that one. Okay, and you can try number 4, because those are all chord chord problems. Now let's jump down to number 5. Okay, get that on the screen for you. There you go. Okay, that's another chord chord problem. So let's look at that. 5 times 9 equals x times 10. So what are we going to get? 45 equals 10x. So x is 4.5 or 4.5. Okay, so there's another chord chord. Now let's try some that have secants right here. Okay, now secants, remember this formula. It's the outside times the whole sum of the whole thing, so we've got to add those together. So the outside of the first secant is 8. And then to get the whole thing, we're not going to multiply, we're going to add them together because you want to just take the two parts and add. So you're going to get x plus 8, okay? And then on the other side, the other segment, you're going to have 7 as your outside part, and then 7 plus 9 which adds to 16. Okay, so we'll, once we distribute this right side, right, aren't we going to distribute? We'll get 8x plus 64 is equal to, hmm, what's that going to be? Let me grab my calculator. I don't know 7 times 16. 7 times 16, 112. Okay, and then from there we're going to subtract 64 and we'll get 48 so 8x equals 48 so that's nice and even x is 6 okay so there we go there's a secant outside times the whole outside times the whole okay so there's our secant segment okay I'm gonna zoom out a little bit to make that a little easier Let's try another secant segment because I want you guys to have a few to try. Let's try number 10. Okay, so I'm going to slide down here to number 10. We have an outside part of 4 and an inside part of x. So let's handle that chord or that secant first. So outside is 4 and then together we're going to add 4 plus x. So x plus 4 is the sum. And that's going to equal to the outside, which is 3.2 times the whole thing. Well, when we add those together, 5 plus 3.2, we're going to get 8.2. Okay, so now this left side we distribute, and the right side we just multiply. So I'm just going to grab my calculator, and I'm going to type in 3.2 times 8.2. And I got 26.24. 26.24. And on this side, I'll distribute 4x plus 16. Now I'm going to subtract 16 from that 26.24, and I'm left with what? 10.24 is equal to 4x. And then we just divide by 4. So x is. 2.56 okay so that's how you would work that one out with some decimals so there are some court some double chords and then secant secants with some practice problems for you in between so let's slide over and let's look at one of these that has a tangent and then a secant okay let's look at let's look at number 12 okay we have an unknown 
tangent. So this is like the problem I did earlier. We're going to take the tangent has got to be squared. So let's take tangent squared equals the outside part, which is 4, times the whole. Okay, so what's the whole segment? 16. So x squared is equal to 4 times 16. 4 times 16 is 64. So x is equal to 8. So that means that segment's equal to 8. And remember, square roots, you always take um, and find a negative also, but we're going to throw that one out because we can't have a negative length. So that's how you would do one that had an, a, a tangent outside. Okay, what if we have a tangent in a different place, or an x in a different place? Like number 11 and number 13 are similar to these. They have a, an x in a similar place. So let's try one of these. Okay, this is going to be the tangent is 4 on number 13. So we're going to take that tangent and we're going to square it. So I'm going to take 4 and I'm going to square that. And I'm going to set it equal to 2.2, .2, which is the outside portion times the whole thing. And what is the whole length? It's this x part plus the outside. So just like I said, we're going to add. So we're going to get x plus 16 for the whole thing. So we're going to get 16 equals 2.2x plus, okay, what's 2.2 times 2.2? 2, 2, whoops. 2.2 times 2.2. That is 4.84. Okay, and then we need to subtract that from both sides. And I'm not always showing every step of these equations because you guys at this point should know how to do those. So I get 11.16 equals 2.2x. Okay, then from here, we're going to divide by 2.2 and you're going to get 5.7. Okay, I got 5.7x is 5.07 actually as my answer. So that would be the length of that side. Okay, so number 14 is another one of those where you have the outside and the inside parts missing, tangent squared. 15, you don't know the tangent, so you're going to have to square that x, multiply outside times the whole. And then let's look at 16, because 16 is chord chord, but we have something special on this one, okay? We have, remember for chord chord, you're going to take one chord and multiply the parts. So this one is marked where these two parts of the chord are congruent. So if this one is x, we can actually label this one also as x. So when we go to multiply that, we're going to have x times x, which is not 2x, but what? x squared. And then this one's going to be 4 times the uh, 9. Remember chords, you don't add anything together, you just take part times part. Okay, so you get x squared equals 36, and so x has to be 6. Yes, and remember, we throw out any negative answers. You can't have a negative answer for a length. There we go. So that's how you do these types of problems, and I've got a few in here not done that you're going to practice on your own, okay? Hope this video was helpful on learning how to do segments. Use this handy dandy. Let me zoom out for you. Ooh, wrong way. <laughs> Use this handy dandy formula sheet as you work through your homework. You've got your tangent tangents. you got chord chords. you got secant secants and you got a secant tangent and all the formulas that go with each one of them. So good luck and let me know if you need some help.